okay, I gotta know. Are you one of those people that can say a live action and a cartoon can be in the same category? For example, best superhero movie? Personally, I cannot put it in the category because there's so much stuff you can do in live action and not in the cartoons and vice versa. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. What's this about? Pretty simple premise, actually. This takes about four to six months after Into the Spider-Verse movie. Now all the different Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Spider-Pigs, Spider-T-Rexes, Spider-Rhinos are now in their own multiverse. However, Spider-Man 2099, our Miguel's character, has all these Spider-Mans kind of in this interesting hub, if you want to put it that way, to make sure all the canon and everything stays okay in all the universes. However, Miles Morales has screwed up a couple times in his and other universes. And now we're going to figure out what, who Spot is, why he's after Spider-Man, and why Miles Morales is in deep trouble. So, I like this film. I thought it was a pretty good movie overall. I mean, it had a great story, great animation, well, some nitpicks here and there, great voice acting, uh, great scenarios, great... Uh, dilemmas some of these characters are in i'm pretty excited for the third one to see what characters do come back uh but then I, this also just how the story is set up how i see the layers sprinkling that the third one is going to be a little bit more conventional than other spider-man movies because the whole reason of spider-man is you have to follow the canon not even follow the canon people die in spider-man's life that's the whole reason and now you even see in the trailer where he's like nah i'm gonna do my own thing which now, I'm a little concerned that the third one's going to go more conventional, more cookie cutter, and nothing bad is going to happen. But I mean, with all Spider-Man movies, you have that. You have it with the Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire. This one, are they going to change the canon for the first time ever and he's going to save everyone? I'm afraid that's going to happen and that's actually going to falter the movie for me. Because the whole reason for the second one is loss is going to have to occur. Loss occurs in life. And then having Miles Morales going to maybe save everyone. It's not possible to save everyone. It's not realistic. But let's talk about the movie as a whole. I, like I said, I thought the voice actor was fantastic. The animation is pretty good. I do like the story overall with the family aspect of where this, this one does leave off. It does leave me every, more interested about the Spider-42 and how it got to that universe. I think it explained it a little bit with the whole Spot character, but it doesn't explain how they actually got into that universe to get that spider, how that spider transferred to point A to point B. Unless I completely missed that story arc, but there's a lot of stuff going on in this movie, and that could also be a negative as well, because there's a lot, a lot going on. Uh, it's gorgeous looking. Like, will this win Best Anime Picture of the Year? So we have this. We have that horrible mermaid one. We have uh, Elementals, which is Pixar's worst one. And... Yeah, congratulations to the Oscar goes to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The end. All right, Spider-Man, you just won your Oscar, period, dot. Uh, for everyone that liked the first one, you're going to like this one. The humor is witty. The humor is completely there. I truly enjoyed it. Uh, just the whole movie itself, it's a fun two hours and 20 minutes, which we'll just continue on in the negatives because this is one review that everyone has seen this one. Okay, this might be a weird flaw for me, but if I had it with Puss in Boots, I'm going to have it with this one. If someone is speaking Spanish, have subtitles. Because you know what? When they were in the Indian world, or the Indian verse, there was subtitles for when they were speaking the Indian dialogue. I don't know if it was Hindi, Tamil dialogue, but what they did is gave subtitles are the little dialogue boxes for when we were in other universes, or when the Anarchist character, or when Miguel was explaining stuff, they're like, oh, this is what this means in Britain. This is what it means when Miguel was talking, but when the mom is speaking Spanish, you don't give me the dialogue, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give you a perfect score because of that. It just it's one of my things. If I'm going to give it to Puss in Boots, I'm going to give it to this one. That You can't give it to the mom. I, when, I ha when they have the father, when they have the mother-son relationship, it means zero to me because I don't know what they're talking about. I do think there's a little bit of a pacing issue in the second act uh, where... It's, just, it's dialogue heavy. There's a lot of dialogue heavy scenes and we like what you're going for, but 
There's just some things where it's like, okay, it feels like this scene's a little bit draggy. This scene's a little bit draggy. But when I cut it out, that's the other thing. Is like, if you cut that out, that kind of hinders a scene that happened before. So I understand that we're keeping it at 220. And also some character things when I think about it now, where it's like Miles Morales should have known at the very end, like in his room, that something's not right. Or just other character choices and scenarios where you're like, yeah, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. Another big thing is a lot is going on. Uh, and when they're in the big hub, and you've seen the trailer where he's running away from the Spider-Man, I just don't know how an inexperienced Spider-Man like Miles Morales can outsmart and outwit every single other Spider-Man in the universe. To me, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I'm like, okay, there's got to be at least some scenarios where he doesn't make it. Also, there's also just some characters I didn't like. Like, of course, you're going to not like every character in the movie, but the Spider-Man, the anarchist Spider-Man, I had some eye roll with these, like, all fascist, and he had all these buzzwords where it's just like, yo, what are you? Like, your your character is just kind of there to be there, and I wasn't a big a fan of that. And I think that is the biggest problem. It's what I said in the very beginning where how this ends, I just feel like they're going to go so safe where I'm predicting Miguel's going to be the next bad guy, Everyone's going to be on Miles Morales' side. Uh, nothing bad is going to happen to Miles Morales' character. Uh, maybe something bad will be- will happen to another timeline, but I think his timeline is going to be a very much a happily ever after, and which is fine. But then I look at like you know How to Train Your Dragon, which you know he loses a leg. Stuff happens. There's going to be loss. But I just feel like how this ends. And I see other characters like the girl on the motorcycle. Listening to the conversation. I don't know. It's a fine movie. I I enjoyed it. But it's just how it ends. Stuff happens in the middle. Where I'm like how is he literally outsmarting every single Spider-Man. In every single universe. But overall it's a good movie. I really enjoyed it. Will I buy it? Absolutely. It's a fun I love the throwbacks. I love the Easter eggs of having some cameos in this movie, which I won't say. But, I mean, it's not a cameo that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield old scenes are going to be in this movie because they're all owned by Sony. But there's also just some other characters where you're like, okay, that's fun. I recognize that. But this is literally for the Spider-Man fanboys out there because there's a lot of stuff to chew on. But as an average person, I truly and truly enjoyed it. So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will receive a 4 out of 5 of futons, which equals that 80%. So those are the critics' news scores gave this one. So you have critics at 96, audience score 97, 178, and 1,000 verified. Critic consensus. Just as visually dazzling and action-packed as its predecessor, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse thrills from start to cliffhanger conclusion. Positives? A lot of Perfect scores. Instant classic? Nah. 10 out of 10? Oof. Some people are giving these perfect, a lot of perfect scores. Um, I mean, yeah, I didn't, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Some pacing issues. Some story arcs where I just, you know, like, what? Like I said, I'm a little nervous how it's going to end. But anyway, Chase Hawk with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Hope no things Blue Futon. Tope, Blue Futon, everyone. A great day. I don't care what I just take tomorrow, week from now, a year from now. I love every single one of you. And oh, yeah, 80, 97, 96. What do you think? Are you ready for Beyond the Spider-Verse? Because that is what's next.